This is the final act in an epic game. The final chance for players to make or break their reputations. The clock has been remorselessly ticking away and now it's nearing the end. 48 hours is nearly up and the last chance for some in the party poker big game beckons. It certainly has been an epic journey here in Vienna. At the Montesino, the big game has taken centre stage and has delivered some classic poker and some riveting drama as some of the finest players on the planet have battled each other and the ever-present threat of eviction. The end is in sight for this epic journey that is the big game. The 48 hours so very nearly up and the hour of reckoning beckons. Just who will stand head and shoulders above the rest? The smart money is on Phil Locke. No big surprise there. He's been the dominant force at this table and shown resilience and enduring power in the face of an ever-changing table. There have been the odd moments of doubt and the odd on, miscalculation. Oh my God, that's, that's terrible. It. That's terrible. <laughs> How do we all that? Oh What's happened? Wait. Did Phil mock his hand? What? Phil has just muffed his hand. Mocked his hand. Sixty thousand euro mistake. Oh my God! That's not possible. Many have taken him on. Some have taken small chunks out of an ever-growing stack. But basically, Locke has found the winning formula as we enter the home straight. Staying ahead. This is something where all the confidence in the world can't help you out. You have to kind of like you're at the mercy of all the intangibles that can happen at a poker table from your brain melting down to just the cards melting against you and that's what i gotta fade right now that's that's really about it sam trickett has repeatedly been looking for that winning formula and in all but a brief moment he has failed to find it right from the start he's been down on both his luck and his cash he's taken numerous breaks but something draws him back to this table i'm really angry because twice i didn't go with my read like I don't mind playing poker and like, I've bluffed off thousands in that game over the last 20, 28 hours or whatever you, and I uh, don't regret any of the hands. Alec Torelli should really have quit while he was ahead, but as they say, hindsight is a wonderful thing. He played big and won even bigger. At one stage he topped the 100k mark, but then it all went horribly wrong. She might still call. That's not going to He's wrong. trying to represent the hand yeah, that JP the, yeah, has. Exactly. He's trying to represent 5-6, Jack-9, exactly the hand that JP has. Wow. Yeah, he made it fairly big. So JP. JP. He's good. He's so good. I'm pretty happy. Feel pretty good. It's just home stretch. I think mentally when you prepare yourself for it and you know that you're going to end at a certain time, it's easier to stick it through, kind of, you know? JP Kelly has chosen his spots well and looks set to finish on a high. No surprise considering his achievements in poker, but here in Vienna, he's dipped his toe into events in the Montesino and time after time, come away with a profit. JP immediately checks here. Just shuts down here. Kelly gets one back. I'll just try and see who's playing, like what sort of style in there. Because people might be playing differently yesterday, you never know. So maybe they're playing today, maybe they're winning now and they're a bit tighter or they're losing now and playing a bit crazier, you never know. Phil Locke, the outstanding man on this leaderboard, as he has been for virtually all of the big game. For those living in his shadow, Ignat Livio is best placed with over 50K in profit. The clock ticking down now and moving into the last couple of hours. Here comes Sly Call this if you don't like money. Sly raises with suited King Jack. Called by JP with a wired pair of fours. I spy a four. Oh. Seven check. And that's a. Uh, JP's got to love seeing that four in the flop. Uh, unfortunately, his opponents didn't didn't hit the ace. 
Uh-oh. He's flatted there. Let's see if Torelli can uh, sniff this out, Scott. Um, I mean, does he have odds to hit a queen? He does versus uh, JP Stack. I mean, if he hits, if he hits a queen, he, he can make it win a really big pot from JP. And I wonder what a check raise would do if you're Torelli. You know, how how strong is JP usually here? What, what does he have besides big hands? Stuff like same kind of stuff that Torelli has, maybe. Well, JP doesn't have Ace King here. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's a hand he would have normally worried about. But Sly could have a hand like Ace King in this spot, or Ace Queen, or Ace Jack. Um, he decides to pass, and that's fine too. Uh, and now JP just, you know, he obviously he didn't raise because he wanted the call or the raise behind him in Torelli. Wow. And there, and that and that was the card. What a, I mean, and this is that. still an interesting card for. Wow, I, I'm sorry he wasn't in the hand because he would have made a straight. And now, now Sly picks up a straight and a flush draw to go around, along with this pair of kings. This is a perfect spot now for uh, JP to make a raise. If only, and, and if only Alec were behind him. Look, look at his face. He uh, JP could have raised here, and Alec would have had the nuts and put in another raise, and there could have been an all-in from Sly. And then who knows what in the set? Yeah, it's called bet and raise. And Torelli, Torelli who sick, yeah. just wants to gamble these last couple hours, is tortured. Well, he might not be so sick on the river if, uh, if like, the board pairs with his heart, but he, it's a, he folds. I'm, I'm very shocked because th there were, even though he's beat most of the time there, there, there are, see, everyone wants to see the river. There's a lot of hands that he actually could dominate. There are other combo everyone draws that he could have had dominated in that position. He could have been, you know, he could have been with uh, weaker straight and flush draws, for example, which he just had in jail, and pair and smaller flush draws and, and things like that that uh, JP would have bombed there as well. So I'm I'm pretty surprised to see that fold, but still a still a fine one in that particular spot. Oh, Torelli! Uh, oh, for the end of this? Oh, yeah. Two hours, I think. Yeah, it was a fun ride. I'm glad we all did it. Why can't I just be Phil Lott? Three, four. Phil Lott, five. Phil Lott would have made it a nice five K. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, but to be the biggest winner as well is quite sick. To what? It's quite impressive to play 48 hours anyway. But to be the biggest winner, by an absolute mile, is quite sick. Like the only winner. Mosley won like 90K. Yeah. Nielsen decides to 3-bet the button with the ace-10 off. I win all the money. I was 10,000 in profit for 30 hours of this game. Phil just calls with two queens. It's it's very interesting to see him not bombing in spots I expect him to. Like when he bombs the way he does, and then you pick up a premium like two queens with a with a bet and a raise, and you've been putting in big four bets with air a lot of the time. I thought that was a good spot, but he does get out flopped here. Uh, Nielsen flops top two pair, and uh, JP Kelly flops the two-way straight draw. So they're gonna like this, this hand, but Phil just gets away from those queens. They the bet ahead of him. Half pot bet, and a niner, a non-club nine or a king can see a very big pot here. Thank you. Four is four thousand and six hundred. Wow, we we could see it here anyway. JP elects to raise with the the double belly buster, the double and, gutter. And is, is the idea, Scott, that, you know, unless, unless Nielsen... Unless he has ace-10. Yeah? <laughs> right. He's uh, probably missed this, or like, you know, two tens. Right. But he just happens to have a monster right here. And uh, he's going to, looks like he's going to just rip it here. Rip his last 8,000 at this point. JP's probably going to call off. He's committed himself with that raise based on Nielsen stack size. Phil, how did you re -raise he me? does, and uh, we're going to see a 26,000 euro vote here. Let's see if they're going to run it once or twice. You know you have to call me if I jam. 25k. Yeah, he almost has to call. Huh? The two cards. Looks like we're doing one time. Now we've got spades to go along with nines and kings. Picks up some more outs. Still a two to one dog. And there is the nine of spades. Makes the straight, but they still take the flush instead. Poor Daniel 
Nielsen. Twice, twice, twice. Sorry, I was only joking. Twice. <laughs> Sorry. Could have caused an incident if you'd mucked it. It's not easy. Is well, it? now you're going with a queen, a nine, or a king. Oh, nope, they're going to chop it up. All right, well. Just get that in. Fair enough. Good stuff for Daniel Nielsen. And by the way, Sam Trickett uh, was just laughing with Phil Locke. He just found out uh, that Phil had the 9 4 that the hand. It's been a half hour now about uh, when he had the two fours. And he said, The funny thing, Phil, is do you realize if I jam, you're priced in. You actually have to call. It was a really odd. Uh, Which is the same number. situation that Phil was in with the ace six versus the ace king last night. Exact same. And not only that, but there's no way that Phil would have agreed to turn his cards over yeah. to show the 9 4 I, I'm not even sure he's sticking in the other 30 plus K he's got to stick in. Uh, the shove is like 40. Uh, he's got out 34, I guess. I mean, he's he almost. <laughs> he's almost. I mean, I didn't yeah. have it up, but, but they, they both agreed. Spacey knows what we have. It's them glasses, man. I swear to God. You've got to be careful with them glasses. Like x-ray. Soul reads. It's kind of scary, really. <laughs> It, it has been scary. And, uh, Phil has spooked them. He has spooked them. Sam's flopped top pair of aces. Phil's got second pair. Let's see if he wants to continue. We'll pull the turn. Still a lot of hands a pair of queens can beat here. There's straight draws and flush draws out there. And that's probably it. Yeah, this makes aces up. Wow, him. this is exactly like the hand he played against, uh, not exactly like, but against J.P. Kelly when he just bombed the turn after J.P. slipped it to him. Yeah, it kind of looks like that one, but... Check. Oh, 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 yeah, you, you can see, you can see like, the shoulder jerk there of Trick, and he's like, damn it. <laughs> running, running full house. I don't, I don't think he was going to get called anyway if he does the He shows you a flush. He shows you a flush when he did there. <laughs> oh, right. The king I flush. <laughs> Just show a king I plus. <laughs> oh, shoot, why didn't I show a king I plus? <laughs>
He's bluffing, and the Jack Queen is going to be good here for just a call. Uh, so he does he does elect to raise, which is which is a bit surprising. I think he's making uh, JP. I mean, he's making Ignat fold a lot of the hands that he's beating there anyway, and uh, or or he's beaten. Ignat's going to call him here with you the ace king. You think Ignat? I mean, it is a really wet board, and uh, with a raise there, hands like ace king, ace queen, even aces, you're not very comfortable. JP's got about 50k back, and Ignat's got, you know, 67% more than that. Yeah, it's a fold. Wow. Uh, it's a fold, yeah. Uh, I mean... That's, that's surprising to flop to flop a king there and then just bet and then fold to, a, to a single raise. I think he's better off check calling there if he's going to fold it when he's raised. I, I agree on that, but I, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily bad to fold the ace king there in a sense i mean comes blank and then the guy bombs again right then if you're willing to, if you're gonna if you're willing to just bet fold that flop i think you should just check call yeah, 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 check check call sure. is the better is the better route for you and, and you should recognize that before you make your better i know he's been playing for a while but just it's about making a plan for the hand and if you think you're going to fold there in that spot when raised you're better off just checking and then calling i just to check, listening check uh ignat's just telling uh jp here it's he feels like he only beats about eight percent of his hands. <laughs> is that what he said? Yeah, eight, 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 it's like a, he just said it. He just said yeah. it. I, and they're I both don't know wrong. What this you is, have, this is quite anomalous. Like eight, eight percent. Eight point five. Yeah, eight, eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jungle man thing. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place now. It's just. It's definitely. It's eight uh, percent. So it was so eight <laughs> percent. Oh, man. What do you have to do to have a brain like that? Uh, it's a long, I mean. <laughs> oh, somebody's just going to do their pieces right now. I mean, yeah, uh, Jungle Man's mannerisms are very similar to data from Star Trek. <laughs> I like just pots it on the 7 9 queen. Neil some calls, and we should see a raise from Trigger here against two opponents. Sort of the idea that too many cards on the turn make yeah. things complicated. Uh, your, your hand is strong, but, but uh, very vulnerable. I mean, uh, all the straight cards, board pairing, you know, like. And if he does decide to call this, if one of those cards comes on the turn, like a like a 10 or an 8, we can expect to see his stack going in based on his stack size here. Nielsen probably is going to, yeah, he's going to peel one off and then reevaluate yeah. the turn. He's only got like 10k behind. His stack's so. going to go in with like a jack, a 10 or an 8 here. I mean, metagame-wise, trick it's kind of been fooling around with Nielsen and Nielsen knows it you, you know what I mean yeah he feels like he's got the uh, the star on his head but but trick has always got I mean besides the 10 jack and Nielsen also has a blocker not that it means that much but still uh, Nielsen's not beating uh, any value range that trick it has I think that that jack there in this situation as far as blockers go is kind of important because yeah, like the is. only bluffs out there kind of include a, a jack a ten, there a ten this jack, is a ten a eight. king yeah it, yeah so I I think it's a fold <laughs> obviously it's easy from the booth but I think it's it just, pot and a half it's pot and a half, and he's called. Oh, oh no. he, just, he just doesn't even think about he it. Just, he doesn't even He locked him. It. He, that was so lock in <laughs> that he bombed it. He'll say it, too. He, You know he'll say it. I did it like Phil. Well, he's going to win here with a 9 I just or a jack. So guarantee it. you. It's an 8% that you not say that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unlucky for Nielsen. Very unlucky. Lucky. I think he's going to have found a fold there. I mean, seriously. Sam Trickens check raising two opponents. Uh, he's got the blocker for the 10 jack and, you know, the occasional king jack. That's that's going to be the end of the end of him in the big game. It's nice to have it. What happened? He raised, he defended. Torelli won me the pot. Torelli led for a grand. And then he called a grand. And yeah, that's you true. You took all of his money. Oh. You had the queen seven of hearts and when the two pair versus and then the, all the chips are right there. Well done, Phil. <laughs> that is a he he kind of did it. Tree, like. <laughs> I was good at it, but I got tired a lot. 
<laughs> start yawning and stuff. Jesse's the best. He's a mutant genius the best. Though. Jesse's the best commentator in the world. There you Ernest go, says, Jesse. Oh, he's hey. raking a pot. Sorry. You should have... <laughs> him, him and Mike together. Sam's only down, like, 7,000 in this game. He was buried. Don't you, don't you muck your winning hands against me? Oh, I'm the needle! <laughs> don't you muck your winning hands against me! Oh, wow. Do you guys know a little bit about Sibacek? No, 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 I do not. Uh, I believe he's a, I think he's a local player. Stylish, too. You know, you come in late, you come in strong, pound it out, right? Yep. You never know when an incident means it could be... Right, you don't and he's got the perfect the bullet size stack, I think, right now. The 12K, I really like. You got that little 2K to mess around a little bit in the beginning, and then it's just going to be start, you know, shove fest. <laughs> Trick it and tilt the rally. Oh, wow. It's such a great name for Alec. I like it. It's funny. It's like a pasta dish. <laughs> Alec did move to Italy, same same town where I live in Parma for a little bit. I'm not sure he's still there anymore, but Til Torelli definitely fixed it. I'm trying to remember. I know they have played some very significant pots Look together. Look at Torelli here, by the way. Sorry, Jesse. Yeah. He said 64. Oh, did he? Yeah, 6,400. Wow. And Trickett's got the fours. A really big raise. They're deep. Well, what is the what does the raise mean? Is it like is it saying to Trickett you need to shove or pass? Is it, well, they're not. They're, no, they're not. They're it's not. It's 5,000 more to Trickett, and Trickett has about 72 behind, but Torelli has 60 behind. So he's not. He's not really quite getting the right odds to try to flop that set. It's actually really close. He's got about, you know, 12, 14 times the better. I mean, he can call just to try to flop a set, but it, it's, it's not, they're not really deep enough at this point to put in this much pre-flop. Uh, he can definitely fold here. He could justify calling here. But it's he's on that gamble. margin. It's on that margin gamble. of being okay to call here. Yep. 5,000 to, to try to flop a set. There it's, it is. It's definitely on the outer margin of that. He does what call 5,000. And Sam's uh, the kind no. of guy uh, who... You like the same? Yeah, similar. Yeah. 25. 30. He just... I mean, give me yeah, a pot yeah. to play in about position sort I've of like thing. Is that... Behind. Oh, yeah, he's not just sand okay. mining here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he likes... Similar. I think he matches up well against Torelli. They, oh, boy. He's oh, not going to match up wow. well here. Oh, wow. Nice flop for Till Torelli. Yeah, this even though the fours technically look like they they're the best hand right now, you can see from the percentages here, the ten eight of diamonds with the straight open ended straight flush draw plus all the pair outs, even a seven takes the lead for Torelli. He's a Probably big make favorite it small here. here. Because he wants action. Yeah, but point. you know that that trick it, like has to call with his whole range once he's. Once he's called six thousand pre flop. Gotta, maybe not. Maybe not with two fours part of his range. That's but we'll a see. big bet. That's a huge, I was not expecting such a big bet. I mean, he wants to get it in here. He's just like almost hoping that Trickett just rips it and they just get it in. He's even a favorite versus two aces here. And one of the reasons that a guy like Trickett can make that call pre-flop is because he he really doesn't mind the difficult decisions post-flop. Right. So it, how do you make this? I mean, what do you? How do you make this decision? I mean, <laughs> what have you found out? All that's happened is a flop came out and the guy just bombed it. I yeah, mean, exactly. That's the that's the weird thing. I was not expecting that in the sense that, you know, the guy makes it 45, 46. You've got a decision now. You can play one more street, reevaluate turn maybe. This is very strange. I mean, is he gonna play kings like that? Just bombing it? Maybe. Sure, you're not going to put your opponent on a nine in this spot, or, you know, if he's got two aces. But then again, don't you want to make a smaller to extract values from hands like fours and fives or any but pair, at the really? Same time, at the same time, you're still okay with, uh, you know, a pocket pair folding, like, even though you are a favorite, like, you still have to get there. You, you know, you're, you're not necessarily going to win the pot if they get it all in here. There's still a lot of dead money out there. River? He's Even oh, though he's no, willing to go with this stack, he's probably pretty content to take it down right here. Why is the turn? Yeah, keep it going. The whole thing. Bump, the next one. Uh, it's full high. 
<laughs> Full high. I win. Yeah, I can't read the board. And so, uh, he made the lay down. Made the good lay down, didn't he? Yep. This is a whole story that just yeah. unravels till the end. So you, you, you really want to watch the whole thing. It's just, uh, <laughs> and Scott, it's like it's like that's how it happens when you're a professional poker player, right? You go through these, you know, the guys that play in casinos or even online. You go through these days or even weeks where there's just these people that like they just torture you. You know, and you know see them in a game, and, and, and they beat you, and, sure. and then and you go to sleep. They follow, and then they follow you, and they're there the next day, and yeah. they're there in the next city, in the next country. Yeah, and you go to sleep, you wake up, and then, like, you go back, and then they torture you again, and then <laughs> it's, like, crazy. And that's what A couple of guys have had nightmares about, sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't beat this guy, no matter what you do. Right. It's very mu Poker's very much a matchup game, and some players match up better against others. Sometimes nobody also. seems to match up well against Phil Lock sure. right now, does it? One trick. Me. I have it. Did I make it three or four hundred? That's the flop I needed. Did I Phil just fly the queens? Yeah, and I put out three yeah. He's been doing a lot of that. He bombs yeah. with yeah, bad yeah, hands, and then four. when he has a big um, bear, he just flats. He check calls and, and it's flies. Weird. Five yeah, J JP's opened this for four hundred. Yeah. Phil's just called in the in the big blind. He's gonna raise it or just call it? No, no, he's just oh, calling. Never it. raising it. Lock. That's so unlucky. Nah, that's so <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> it's not even funny. Now he's letting uh, JP pick up some more outs here. He's got a, a straight draw oh, to go right. along He'll with his. Call. It's, it's all good. To go along with his pair of fours. He can now limit a four, a five, or a six. I, I don't think Phil will ever put a chip into this pot voluntarily. No, he's just gonna call. Yeah. And then he's just gonna call the river, based on how the line he's taking yeah. in the sand. I don't know why. I like thought, I don't like thought about it. Ouch! And there's no way Phil's folding. No. Because how can you fold at this point? Now what about JP oh, yeah. bombing? Oh, he's he's one. He's no, he's reverse, reverse bomb! bomb. Reverse <laughs> bomb! <laughs> it's time for the reverse. Oh come oh, on, JP! Oh. Just, just do it. JP, just think do about it. it at least. Just do it. Just stick 10k in okay. there. Come on. <laughs> Did you call it the end? It was reverse implied bomb. <laughs> trick, it, <laughs> trick it with a needle yeah. at the end. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, I mean, it's so interesting. They're, they're, they're really deep here. You, they're you, so deep. You have if you have to bet it here. I mean, it's so fishy not to bet. Like right. you're, you're going to bet with most of your range in this spot. Right. And so now to check here would be right. would, would would put in alarm bells. I, I don't I, like that check at all. I, I like that check. I don't like checking there, because you're betting all the time there. To not bet looks strange. You can be betting there with air a ton, and you can you can induce plays against you. Not to mention queens that are out there. It's not like he has top set, and then the other guy can't have any queens. He's got the eight, and you can bet hoping that. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, it's, it was Ignat who made the, the oh, four bet. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, no. Ignat made it just check yeah, back no, for the button. I, I stand corrected. I, I was thinking it was opposite. <laughs> No, no, Sorry, no, of late. course, of course. No, yeah, I was, yeah. I was of thinking course, JP of should bet. Yeah, no, 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 of right, course. Absolutely. Of course I'm betting the set every time, like 100% of the time, just the queen. Yeah, no. forget everything I said. All right. <laughs> I, I felt, I felt, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the checking back with the queen jack there is, it's, is, is, it's is pretty good. good, actually, yeah. It's so deception, you, you bloated, it's Yeah, control. you bloated the pot at that point pretty big, and yeah. now you only have top pair. Oh, of course you're betting a set, 100% of the time. Wow, this is only the turn, and and now it's gonna. How go. do you size this if you're JP? Well, first we'll see what big, the river is. Just big. Uh, yeah. Ignat, it would be good if a big card is on the river. <laughs> that's oh, actually nice good. that's not that's not a card that hurts JP in a sense. No, the at all. Here, he's not at gonna all. put him on an eight, and now you know he's playing his eights and queens with the jack. And there's he's a up. lot that misses there. Isn't he usually when he checks back there? It's not. Kings or aces? Isn't it more like? Uh, I, I, isn't it more like ace, queen, or jack? I think he's going to bet twenty-five. Or are those here. both the same? Is that always uh, aces the same? Aces is for pretty similar. He's betting, pretty 20, similar. He's betting twenty-five thousand. In my opinion, it is. He's going to polarize his bet. He's going to bet slightly over the pot, even twenty-five k. Yeah. Wow, really? Twenty-five k? Yeah. That's what I'm just I'm guessing. Look, I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff that that misses. Uh, Right, once the 10 comes, you mean. Right. And he's not hes not representing a lot of overpairs, a lot of aces and kings when he calls his 4-bet. So, like, that's basically what he's repping here when he bets it. It, look, it looks perfect like a bluff if, if you overbet it here with 25K. He also made that big check-raise bluff against Ignat earlier, didn't he? 18,500. He bets 18,500, just under the size of the pot. I, I think uh, Ignat's going to call. I mean, you don't, like, hold 4-bet with Queen Jack, and then that board, run, after checking back the flop and then allowing what seems could be a bluff out of uh, JP on the turn. It's uh, a pretty safe, safe spot. Safe but turns and rivers. I would be, I would be very surprised yeah. and impressed if Ignat is able to fold Ignat, this here. Ignat's calling here. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to he, call. He, in a sense, he under his queen by checking back. It yeah. looks a lot like Ace King, Ace Jack, a sort. Uh, and he could... There's even spots here where um, JP could conceivably be valuing a slightly weaker hand. Yeah, hands. like jacks, right. like like nines. Like jacks or queen nine or something. Yeah, even like nines. I mean, if he narrowed down the range to the ace, jack, ace, king kind of kind of yeah. hand, then you you can definitely value bet very thin. And, and JP Kelly is definitely the kind of player that could do that. In his mind, what is he losing to here? In his mind, he's thinking he's losing to like queen king and ace queen. Well, every, how about every, tens? How about yeah. tens? And that's it. Uh, well, <laughs> that's it. Because he doesn't have aces and kings, doesn't have queen eight or five eight. Probably I'm not sure if JP is that straightforward. I don't think so either. But I, I know what you mean. I mean, I, I don't think so either. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, essentially queen isn't essentially queen jack like kind of like. Not a good hand right now. <laughs> no, but that's what we're saying. It's, it's, it's a bluff catcher. It can beat value. It can no, beat, it's not yeah, just yeah. a bluff catcher. It can beat value hands because, like you said, yeah, JP yeah, that nines and jigs. Wow, what a laydown. He folded. What a laydown. Yeah, that's a, the that's a pretty good fold. is an amazing. He, wow. He's a master. Wow. That's a fantastic fold. Wow, and and the tendency we've seen of Ignat. Remember the king five hand where he just snaps it off, and like at the beginning he was, he, we thought he was kind of a calling yeah, machine. Yeah, because he's a sick genius. He's, he, I yeah. mean, that's he's actually one of the better folds I, I've seen wow. this, whole, this whole game. This whole game that this, this could be. Definitely like a top five fold on, on the river. If, if when top, JP if sees that, he's gonna ex like his head is gonna explode. I don't think JP put him on a hand that strong. No, no way, no way. Ignat, twenty thousand pounds. He just uh, got off the hook with. That's that's his night right there. That's his night. This is the new name that's coming out. Out of these forty-eight hours, Jesse, if we got to think about a new name to put out there. 
Ignat Divio is, is so definitely it. Can you draw so we can play? Nicholas, if you want the seat, you can ask. You were here before the whole night you were there, so if you want it, just say it. We got to see some speed now with Carmozino's back in the game. It's up to you to choose. We can sit there or here. We'll give you the option. You get the free equity. Come down here, kid. Let me hang out with you. No, 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 Sammy. No, no, Sammy. No, no, no. Okay, stay. They're actually t asking. Still, it's better for you. They're asking Dominicus which uh, seat he wants. They give him the choice, got, uh, and that's an important choice right there. Life, yeah, I, 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 I'm, su I'm surprised. I'm well, really it's not about Phil. Why? He said, uh, "Yeah, I don't want to be really Sammy, Sammy." I don't like yeah. you leaving the table. I'm do it. Phil really so wanted Dominicus to yeah. sit next to him because if you look at this picture, like he's all Blade alone. I mean, anyway. nobody's talking to him. Phil. Well, he likes the space to stretch out there. He said there's no room for his feet to stretch out under the table. Kick his legs up. He hasn't slept in days. <laughs> Alec picks up big slick. Is it time? Oh, it must be. Phil wants to play the queen jack and calls. Sam Trickett wakes up with a wide pair of jacks behind him. And re-raises to 1,600. There could be some fireworks here. Torelli can put in a fourth bet or choose to just call this. In any, of eight, in any event, Phil Locke should fold behind him. This is getting serious. And it's gotten serious now. And he does choose to put in that fourth bet, the 5400, and Phil Locke does fold. Sam, I expect to just call here. It, it, it comes pretty tricky when you put in a fifth bet with uh, two jacks. It almost becomes a bluff at that point. I don't know. This hand is so strong that Trickett has compared to uh, the stuff they've been going at each other with. Sure, and, and he does call. And we're going to see a pretty big flop, uh, pot going into the flop here with 11-5 in it. Good. That's just the kind of uh, kind of flop we're going to see. Uh, and Torelli's going to have a hard time laying this down now with the overpair and the straight try to go along with it. Excuse me, uh, Trickett. It goes check, check. Now, uh... Trickett's not 100% convinced. He still has the best hand, though. He's, he's probably pretty happy with it uh, because even queens, kings, and aces could potentially uh, be check calling on a 7-8-9 on a flop there with such a big pot. However, he does check again. He would love to see a 10, 10, a 10 on the river. Wow, and that's it. So that he can win a very big pot here because there's a, a five card straight on the board with no flushes. So he can bet the jacks here and hope to get called by Torelli, who's just playing the board. And he's probably going to bet it pretty big, like 15,000 or something, 10 to 15,000 size of the pot. He bets out, yeah, he bets size of the pot, 10,200. And uh, if Torelli's able to fold this, will also be a good fold. But he's only playing to chop the pot. He hates this. Yeah, so he's calling 10 to win like 5 to win half the pot back. So, like, the odds are really bad here, but he doesn't think that Trickett has a, a jack in his hand that often. And he makes the call. That's not the call. Oh, that may be a raise. Oh, he raises and, and Trickett snap calls him with the jack. That That's a bit of a misstep there. That's really interesting. He, he really thought uh, Sam didn't have the jack uh, very often there, and because of that, he puts in the raise, uh, thinking he can take down the whole pot. That's something a lot of the guys do these days, especially on those uh, straight boards, don't they? It's like uh, leveling each other, isn't it? Yeah, that, that was a bit of a level. He probably uh, thought a little bit too hard in that one. Yeah, I think I guess you always have the jack there. Yeah. 
No, I'd Almost bet without a jacket. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It'll be good to see. Yeah, yeah. You know? Sitting down right now, it's a British poker legend. I think. <laughs> John Cabage coming in for 28000 with the glass of wine. He don't mind if he doesn't have much time. Uh, and I, I, I just get a feeling. Well, I don't get a feeling. I know for a fact that Cabage is going to just ram and jam. Well, he doesn't have much time, so he can't, he can't wait out and, and feel around the table. So he's, he's going to have to come out firing if he wants to play here tonight. Yeah, he's got good form in that department. <laughs> John Cabage, actually, for, for a guy so young, and uh, he, is, he is on the young side, but he is, he's old guard in the British school. He's been around playing poker for years. Um, he won a f his first bracelet, I think, two years ago, but uh, had several runner-up finishes back in the old Binions. I mean, he's been around for a while. You have a good hand? Yep. Lose three again? Uh, I think I have the beat. Bars is on the button this friendly, hand. Friendly. It's a friendly bet, 700. Keep your Dominikus uh, bets the ace high. It's called by Kabaj's pair of sixes. I have something. That's Nothing really changes on the turn. I believe you. To check. Check. <laughs> check to my friend. Go check. Ah, nasty man. Oh, there's no. Oh, you got two pair now. Probably goes check. check check here. Check. If he makes a bet for value here, that would be a fantastic bet. If you can put him on just ace high uh, and bet here and get called. Bet. Yeah, and he's saying, he's saying he's value betting. This is a really good bet here. He might get called by the ace high. A lot of confidence coming from John Cabage right now. Don't do anything Whoa. silly, Dominic. Did he? I think he called. I think he might have raised him. I think he might have raised Oh, he did. He raised to 3,800. <laughs> I think Kabaj is going to call. I think he thought he knew where he was in the hand, and he knew he knew his also bet ahead. looked weak. And when you know your bet looks weak there, sometimes you have to call the re-raise because you're inducing a lot of bluffs at that point. I don't know. It's a strong play. It is a strong play, but because of the nature of his bet, his value bet, and how, how he went about it, I think he was, he was trying to look weak. And when, and when you do that... You oftentimes have to call the raise there because you're, you're getting you're getting a lot of bluff raises in that spot. You're inducing a raise with that bet oftentimes. But I, I'm not I'm not sure I understand Dominique's raise here because what is he trying to represent? Like his ace is good here if Kabaj is bluffing, and oftentimes Kabaj, if he's value betting there, has like a full house or like a queen, which is unlikely to fold. So. I like the bet, initial bet by Kabaj. I don't like the raise by Dominikus, but I do think Kabaj should be calling here when he, when he value bets so weak there in position. He value bet there because he thought he had the best hand, and that shouldn't change here. You seem like a nice guy, Dominic. I am a nice guy. I think he's going to call. You got it. Good call. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Dominique has put him on exactly what he had. And Just yeah. tried to push him off John it, right? Kibaj played that hand uh, really well there. But but like I said, even if he does have what he has there, he still should be calling the raise in the river. Good try, but Once you choose to make the, the small value bet there, oftentimes you should be calling it off. Nice hand, Tom. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As the big game winds down to the last few hands, the pressure is on in the big game. No wonder you've got a, a big house in London. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to live up north playing with guys like this. Look, that's the difference, you see. I don't think Locke's the only one trying to make it to the end. Ignat, I think, is just saying to himself, come on, end. Get there, end. Hurry up. Like, like an absolute print merchant. He won the first day on the well. Just keep on winning. He won the first day on the Monday. 
two weeks ago. Four cards. It's kind of good. I mean, those things are nice. It's kind of good. Six cards. Dominique has actually found something. Seven. Raises to 400 with the ace queen offsuit. Followed by the queen eight suited of JP Kelly. An eight right in the window for JP. He takes the lead. Nine. It's about 900. Fairly big oh, bet that one, right? But yeah, about almost a fat size bet. Uh, what he missed completely? Get some backdoor draws. Ace high. That's just about it. Does turn the straight draw with a jack. He'll make the nuts. Might see another bet out of him. Yeah. Wants to win this one. Another big bet for him. Twenty-eight hundred. Well, he wouldn't bet a ten, would he? Sure. He could bet a ten here. Um, he is out of position. He doesn't want to check and uh, and uh, have to make a decision uh, behind him. I think he can gain a lot more uh, information by betting in that spot. But uh, Kelly's a non-believer with his his pair of eights. He also could have a hand like ten jack or ace jack, or and obviously ace queen. But even ace ten and ten jack and queen ten and those kind of hands. Um, and now, if JP thought his hand was good the whole time, I think he would continue to think that. So I expect to see a check, uh, it to go probably check, check here. And if he does decide to bet one more time, uh, he's checked. Check. Yeah. I think he was checking there, perhaps intending to call a river bet with his ace high. All the, all the draws missed. Um, it might have been, he might have called the bet there with his ace high, actually. And we have the last Call hand the of the game. Then. This is it. Do you want to hold the, do you want to hold the four thousand in and run it out? The last hand of yeah. the big game six. Everyone put a thousand in and do a flip. Yeah, no anti or anything. No anti. No thousand each. Let's go. Great. Last hand is a flip for a thousand, suggested well, by Sam Trickett. Phil Locke should suggest they do a flip for about 2,500. <laughs> that if he wins that, he can break, his, uh, break the record. I'm too good at this. Come on, Phil. <laughs> Whatever. I, I don't want to ruin my stats. I get the whole number. Don't, don't you? Phil's out. Phil, Phil is and out. No one else is going to do the flip. Time around the table. Yeah. I, I wouldn't count. If I won 50 <laughs> in a flip, it's not, it doesn't count. <laughs> Come on, David. And we're just going to run this board. I think they're going to see a flop and turn, then they're going to all expose one, if I'm guessing correctly, they're all going to expose one card and then see the river. <laughs> In the uh, in the true spirit, there's Kabaj, Ace Three, Trick It. Well, he just runs so good. Yeah, we'll see. There's a lot of hands actually in this round. Of hands. <laughs> Can you imagine if Steven Check wins? The poor guys. Uh, <laughs> or if there would have been a cooler <laughs> to get a big bot uh, if we had played it regularly. Turn the one, the one you look. Turn it over. The one you look. Okay. I didn't look at it. There's the flop. Keep in mind, these guys have not seen their hands yet. They're, 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 just, they're turning over one card each on the turn, or on the flop, rather. Yes. I am brave if I hate baby. If I hate there is no eight out there. Nine's full. This hand is over, but nobody knows that yet. I am fucked up. Sivacek has the nuts. Doesn't matter what the river brings. I need a nine. What do I need? I need an eight. I just need a ten. I'm gonna have an eight. I need a ten. What a monster. We should all look and then we get to the last card. Oh, look. Oh, wow. How about these? Look, it's no luck. He's trying to head. Oh, straight up. Everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I knew he was gonna win because he didn't want to play. 
chip it over there. Look at his hand as well. I dominated everybody. <laughs> I dominated everybody, look. Make a chip. Sorry, I had the best hand. It's nine's four. Like, what the hell? Fantastic <laughs> stuff, this big game. And I mean, uh, Sibacek, that's the biggest pot he's won tonight. Yeah, by far. That last hand has made him a winner. Uh, just have a look at uh, some of these winners. Uh, who are your, your favorite names from here? Definitely Phil. Phil is definitely the player of the game. There's no question about that one. Uh, Ignat also played great. So did Andy and JP, Sam. Everybody on this list played really well. I got incredible s s spots, and it was like all my mistakes kind of worked out, except the one mistake where I didn't like bother to see if my dangler yeah, connected so you, with the board. You had that, a six, yeah. And you marked because you didn't see. The six. I thought I, I actually was seizing up. My brain seized up. When I go back to trying to remember what I was thinking. I remember thinking possibly that I had ace nine. I think that's what I was thinking. I went out on too many narrow branches, but most of them just held me. I really enjoyed it. It was good. Uh, I enjoyed the second session a bit better because I was more awake and it was more of a grind like the first session, but overall pretty good. I felt very, very good in the game. I liked it very much. Great poker. Uh, all the table played great poker. I'm a little, bit, a little bit tired in the end now. I played all day, but I think I played overall good. I didn't really enjoy it. I uh, got in loads of awkward spots, loads of good situations pre-flop, but never really flopped anything good. Never really cooled anyone and I didn't win any all-ins. No one wanted to lose a big pot, you know, the last minute because everyone would remember that guy. Oh, he's a loser. He's the biggest loser, you know, no matter how much you lost yesterday, but if you lose during the last five minutes, you know, you are the biggest loser. So. <laughs> Playing against JP and Sam and Andy, they're just like, you know, they're all the best in the world and it's like they make you make so many mistakes that I wouldn't otherwise make. So I think I could have played better, but uh, sometimes you got to just tap the table and give it to them because they're, they're good. So tough. Alec Torelli, a real surprise on the list for the biggest losers. He's had a real up and down sort of game. Other big names here include the Jungle Men, Mike Sexton and Sorrel Mizzy. Few would have predicted any of those names on that list. It's been an incredible journey with Phil Locke leading the way across every minute of the 48 hours. He's never been down and has chased that record breaking profit like a man possessed. For others, it's been a real roller coaster ride. Some finishing on an unexpected high, others crashing to an all-time low, but whatever the fortunes of individuals, the big game has delivered when it really matters.